So we're going to talk about the record browser. So and why we need the record browser. So let's take an example of creating a sales order. Let's say we're going to navigate to this and we're going to click on enter sales order. As an end user, I can see the fields required which is customer, date, status. And in order to save the sales order successfully, I have to enter a few line items. Finally, I'm going to click on C. But if the Swift script developer has to automate these things, let's say the sales order creation has to be done via script, they have to know how to refer this particular field called customer and how to set this particular sublist item sublist with item and quantity and now they're gonna click add via script. So in order to do that, as a first step to find the particular field ID or this particular field reference, we have to navigate to O and then click on set preferences. And under general, there is an option called as show internal IDs. So I'm gonna click on this checkbox and I'm gonna click save. So for example, before I click save on this preferences, if I just open the list of sales orders, I cannot see the internal ID of the sales order. Now the moment I enable this show internal IDs and if I click on save and now if I go back to the list of sales orders and if I refresh this particular sales order, now I can see the list of internal IDs. Now if I just try to check the field ID or the field help of this particular customer in order to find the field ID, I should be able to see something like IDs on this. Now right now if I see for the memo, I have the field ID called memo and right now there's a test account, maybe there could be some issues but if you have the actual sandbox account, you shouldn't face this kind of issues but I can see in each and every field, I can see the unique field IDs for this fields. Now let me scroll to items, I cannot see the items of this ID here also and if I want to find the item, I don't have any field help for sublist fields, right? So in this case, there is another option called as record browser. How can I open the record browser? You just need to click on the help center and start searching for record browser. And the first result which I got was Swift script record browser. I'm going to click on this particular Swift script record browser. And now if I scroll down, I can see the go to Swift script record browser, right? So I'm just going to click on that. Now I am in the record browser page. Right now I can see this record browser is in yellow highlighted. How are we gonna make use of this particular record browser? Now let's take an example of creating a sales order in UI. Now let me just navigate to sales and click enter sales order. On the other hand, I'm gonna create the sales order even in the script. In order to create the sales order successfully in UI, we need customer, which is a mandatory. And other than that, date and status by default it is setting to dependent fulfillment and date is also by default sets to current date and on the item level we'll need at least one minimum line item and the quantity with one or two and finally i'm going to add this line item and finally we'll click on the same we're going to do this scripting also in order to create the sales order so in order to create the sales order via script we're going to make use of modules there are a lot of modules so we're going to make use of this record module create our Sales order record and we're gonna use this log module for our debugging purpose and this log module is actually a global object there is no need to define or load this particular log module in your script using record module we're gonna make use of record.create create our sales order and this is the api we will be using the record.set value api with the values like customer and memo and to create a item sublist or we add a new line in the item sublist we're gonna make use of select line so to set line level values like item quantity we're gonna make use of record.set current sublist value api so to add the line in the item sublist we're gonna make use of record.commit line api and to save the record successfully we're gonna make use of record.c i'm gonna use the schedule script i'm gonna write this first line of code which is record.create i have not specified the what type of record it is i'm gonna type sales order in this how did I come up with this value? So if I go to record browser here, right now it's filtered based on the alphabetical key. Now I want to create the sales order, so I want to click on S. Now if I just go to sales order, here we have the sales order on the first page. And on the right hand side, I can see the sales order name and the internal ID of the sales order record is so and so. 
So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it here. Now he's dynamic. We'll not worry about what this property is. We'll just concentrate on creating the record. So I'm just setting it to true as of now. And now if I just go back to our UI, right now we are in the page where the record of create has been set. And this does not mean we have successfully created the sales or we are in the still process of setting the customer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the customer in the UI. Now the customer has been set to ABC marketing. If I have to set the same value in NetSuite by using an API called record dot set value and which accepts two properties I would say. So one is field ID and the other property which accepts is value which I have to set in that field. So if I go back to record process and then if I have to set the customer which is the label is customer. So I'm going to search with customer or let me search with the field ID called entity. Now here we have with customer label and the field ID of this particular thing is entity. Now if I just scroll up now on top I can see this is an internal ID and the field label is customer. So I'm going to copy that internal ID and I'm going to set it in the field ID as a string. And the value which I'm going to set is the customer value. So if I go back to NetSuite and this is the customer which I want to set. If I just open this customer, I can find the internal ID in the URL which says 325. If I just click on this particular list of customers, I can see the list of internal IDs. I'm going to select ABC Marketing INC. So I have the internal ID of INC, which is 325. So if I go back to script, I will set the value as 325. Right now, this is an hard coded value. But when you do the actual coding, it will be a dynamic value. It's not going to be fixed always. So on the other hand, if I switch back to NetSuite, I want to make sure memo is set. So let's say a memo, since I'm creating it, this particular field or via UI, this particular field called memo. So in order to find the memo field, go back to record browser. Or other option is still you can search it with Field help since we have already enabled the show internal IDs. So I can see the field ID is memo. I can copy this memo and drop it here. Now the value which I'm going to set is a string value. So I would say here script creation. Now if I just scroll down, we have a sublist called item sublist. And we are trying to set the item and the quantity and finally going to add this. So in order to do this in code, right? Now if since this is the item sublist and the item, I'm going to select one item here, so bedroom, let's say, and cut it, and I'm going to set quantity as one. Right now, the item is not added, still, it's still in the line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same step in script. So if I just go back to script, in order to add a new line, I will do select uh, rec dot select new line. And add a property called sublist ID, and then I don't know the sublist side, right? I'm going to use the record browser again. So here we have the sublist and here we have the item sublist and the ID of item sublist is this particular item. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it here. So what's happening here is I'm just trying to select a new line in my sales order. So what I'm going to do is as a next step, I'm going to set the quantity and the item. So in order to do that, I want to use rec dot and this will accept two to three set of parameters. One is sublist ID and the next one is field ID. So we are going to try to set the field ID called item. So I will just go back to record closure. And if I just try to search for the label called item and here we have the ID of this particular item. So in the column of this table, we can clearly see the header says internal ID. I'm going to paste it on this field ID and then I want to set the value. I don't know what the value is. Right now I can see in the name, the UI, it says, it says bedroom and traffic being bed. So let me go to list, accounting and then items to find the internal ID of this particular item. And here we are and traffic being bed and whose internal ID is 252. So I'm gonna go back to the pool and I will set the value as 252. So I'm gonna use the similar API to set field ID as quantity right 
here we can see in the UI it says quantity, but let's go check the record browser once. And if I check for quantity, there is a quantity field that says this is the field ID. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna paste it here. Now that we have set both item and quantity, and in the UI also we have done the same thing. Now if I just click add, the moment I click add, I can see the new line has been committed. So in order to do the same thing in script, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do rec dot with sublist line. So I have to provide the sublist ID, which is item sublist, and most of the values are hard coded right now. Quantity, let me set it as two. So in order to save the record, let me save the same stuff in UI first. Now the sales order has been successfully saved by uh, UI and we can see the memo. Now let's go back to our code. Finally save this record. While saving this record, this is going to return me the internal ID of the sales order. So I'm going to store it in a variable called and I'm going to assign the internal ID value of this record. Let's say rec dot. So now let's finally log this internal ID also so that we will come to know the actual internal ID which got created from the schedule script. So in order to do that, I'm going to use log.debug API which is going to accept two things. So in title, I'm going to set the value as record successfully saved. So I'm going to pass the details value as sales order ID and the value will be concatenated and I'm going to set this internal ID. So we are pretty much done with our script and there is only one thing which is left out here. So far we have been using this record.create to create the sales order and using that record object we have been using the APIs like set value, set current sublist value, select new line and commit the line and also save this record right. So if I upload this code and if I execute it is going to throw me an error because I have not defined this record module so I am gonna define this record module here. Now please save this file as a javascript file format and to upload this particular file in netshoot account navigate to documents files and then click on shoot scripts so once you land up on this shoot script folder you should be able to see this button called as add and you can click on add file and you can select your file to upload i have already uploaded my file and this is the file name which i have provided also i have created the script record using the same file if you don't know how to create the script record once you upload the file successfully to the file cabinet, just navigate to customization, scripting, scripts, and then click on new. You should be selecting the file which you have uploaded. And once you select the file and when you click on create script record, you will be landing up on this particular page. Automatically, the nature would have been recognized your script as schedule script and the version as 2.2. And I've just provided some name. So let's save this. So in order to deploy, I'm going to click on deploy script. Since it is a schedule script, we are supposed to schedule this, but I'm not going to schedule this as of now. So I'm going to trigger this schedule script manually. So let's provide some ID. And let's keep the status as non-scheduled. And let me save this deployment. And now once I save this deployment successfully, so to trigger this manually, I'm going to click edit. And I'm going to click on the event execute. So now our script is running. Right now it's in pending status, so let me click refresh. Okay, it says the status is complete, which means our schedule script has run successfully. So let's open our deployment and if I go to execution log and I can see the log which we have added using log.debug and the title says record successfully saved and the detail says sales order ID 22401. So now let's go to transactions, sales, enter sales orders and we're gonna click list of sales orders. And if I just click Ctrl F and paste my internal ID which I copied from the log, I can see the internal ID here. So let's open the sales order. And we can see the memo already which says script creation and the customer is ABC marketing. And the item is so and so and the quantity is 2 which we have set via script. So we have successfully created a sales order record using the script. So I hope this would have helped you how to use this record browser.